several students have expressed some concern and difficulty completing the evidence section of the critical reading worksheet as part of the what do you think argument unit. So in this video, I'll take a look at that section of the worksheet, complete it for a new article, and do it a little bit more slowly, taking careful time to define each of the different types of evidence and showing how I might read through an article to find all six. So we start with the My Big Campus bundle. And remember that your critical reading information is located here. A blank worksheet and a model example. After I finish this, a new model example will appear here. So you'll have two to refer to. The video that you're watching right now, you probably just found here lower in the bundle. It's not available yet as I record. I have chosen this article from New Zealand. New virus linked to collapse of bee colonies crucial for agriculture. I'd like you to pause the video right now and take a look at this article. I've assigned it to you in your binder. So if you go to New Zeela and look in your binder, you should find this article listed there. Pause and read. Now that you're back, I hope you enjoyed the article about the bee colonies and the virus that is causing or possibly being linked to colony collapse disorder. This has been a recurring and important problem in U.S. agriculture, and I hope you learned a little bit more about it. But let's take a look at the critical reading worksheet. Right here. I have completed several sections of this worksheet, and you can take a look at the model example to see how I did it. But I want to look at this section, which is currently blank. Six different types of evidence. And I can read through the article looking for each. The first I'm looking for is testimony, and testimony refers to, as I will note in my comment, this refers to any quotations or statements made by a person or organization involved in the event. So. If I look at my summer, summary sentence up here, I see it says, US scientists released a study identifying a plant virus as responsible for the collapse of honeybee colonies. Anybody connected to this study or the collapse of honeybee colonies would be somebody involved in the event. I'm going to take a look back through my New Zealand article. I can use some of the functions of New Zealand to annotate, and that means mark the text, and this will help me. Remember, that as you complete these critical reading worksheets, you should read or look through the text several times to help you find everything that you need to find. Right now, I'm scrolling through primarily to look for quotations, and I see one right here. They have a high mutation rate, says Yan Ping Chen, an expert in bee diseases and lead author of the study. Any quotation from Chen is testimony. So, I will highlight that with yellow. I look through, oh, this is not a quotation, but it's still a statement from Chen. So, once again, I will highlight it in yellow. Here's more from Chen. I'll highlight that in yellow. Here's yet more from Chen. Highlight that in yellow. And I look through, Randy Oliver, a biologist and beekeeper, he certainly seems somebody that's involved in the event. So, I will highlight that in yellow. I continue through. I'm not seeing any more quotations. Oh, last year the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Environmental Protection Agency issued a joint report that listed the major identified causes of co colony collapse, pesticides, pathogens, and inadequate nutrition. That seems like a statement. It is a report, which is a type of statement. However, this is an example of authority, and I'll take a look at that later. Right now, I can see two types of testimony, one from Chen and one from Oliver. So, I go back. Yan Ping Chen. I list his name and identify who he is. Lead author of the study semicolon marks the next one. And I remind myself of the name, Randy Oliver, biologist and beekeeper.
easy enough. I have found quite clearly that two people involved in the event have given their testimony and I just list them and identify who they are here in testimony and I'm done. Now I'm going to skip down to authority because I mentioned it down here at the bottom. The U.S. Department of Agriculture and Environmental Protection Agency. That is an agency that is not directly involved in this study or the cultivation of bee colonies. Rather, they sit on the outside, observe, and render an expert opinion. So, I will consider this authority, because that is exactly what authority does. I will mark it as green. Going back to my critical reading worksheet, I see I want U.S. Department of Agriculture and EPA. So, U.S. Department of Agriculture, and I will abbreviate EPA for Environmental Protection Agency, Joint Report on Colony Collapse Disorder. I'll scan through to make sure that I don't see anything else. Another study, separate study. I don't see anybody identified as speaking. No, doesn't look like it. So I have all of my quotations and statements. And I'll make a note here. Authority refers to any quotations or statements made by a person or organization not involved in the event. The reporter notes their opinion because they are experts. That's authority. Let's look for something else simple. As I read through the article, I like to find my simple pieces of evidence and leave some of the more difficult ones for later. Statistics is always easy because statistics is simply numbers. So I will look through looking for numbers. Don't see any. Here we go. Commercially, cultivated bees pollinate about 90 crops worldwide, a business valued at $14 billion annually. Got that? I will label it in purple. Oh, honeybee colonies are vital to the multi-billion dollar agricultural industry. Multi-billion dollars is close enough to a number. I'll list that as well. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. go. Only about 5% of plant viruses are known to be transmitted by pollen. That's a statistic. Here's another one. Infection rates rose to 22.5%. 5% high in winter. Purple. No more, no more. Here we go. 35 pesticides and fungicides in the pollen. There we go. And no more numbers. So all of the purple are numbers. Now I could copy and paste that information into my critical reading worksheet, but that will be confusing. So rather, I will summarize. I will say for these couple of sentences, data on B contribution to agriculture in number of crops and amount of money. Next, I was looking at percentage of plant viruses known to be transmitted by pollen. Next, I will find infection rates in winter. And I believe one more. Finally, 
number of pesticides and fungicides in pollen. Good. So I still must see definition, research facts, and personal stories. Definition is probably the easiest of these three, so I'll look for those. And I believe I remember seeing a few. So as we look down, I see a pathogen, that is a disease-causing microorganism. This is a definition of not only a pathogen, but the tobacco ring spot virus. So I could list both of those separately. Regardless of how I list, I will note that here in pink. I don't see a definition here. Don't see a definition here. Pollination is the process by which pollen is transported from the male to female. That is another definition. I don't see anything here. 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 Nothing here. Nothing here. Oh, I missed one. Neonicotinoids. Okay, so I have three terms defined. Pathogen, pollination, and neonicotinoids. Nicotinoids. Nicotinoids. Sorry, I'm having difficulty pronouncing it. Neonicotinoids. There we go. Pathogen, pollination, neo, there we go. And let's see, it helps if I, if, if it helps if I spell that correctly. There we go. Okay, I'm only looking for personal stories and research facts left. And unfortunately, New Zealand only gives me four different colors of highlighting. I've highlighted a lot, so I'll look at just what's left in white. And as I look through, I might think about personal stories. I don't remember seeing any. In fact, I'll ignore personal stories because I don't see any stories of any farmers or anybody else. I will list none. That leaves researched facts. Now, Many students have been listing one, two, or no research facts. That's obviously showing a misunderstanding of research facts. Research facts mean all the facts that the news reporter has presented that are not testimony, authority, definitions, personal stories, or statistics. That means just about everything here in white. That's quite a lot. So let's see how I can condense some of that and make it a little bit more easily readable. I have a couple paragraphs here. This is a topic sentence, so I'll skip that. I already summarized the article, and that's pretty much what's going on here. Virus is shown to be going... So what I can say is... First research fact. The way the bees were infected. Okay. The next research fact is causes of colony collapse disorder. Is that what I have? Yep. Causes of colony collapse disorder. Next. TRSV. I'll call this the behavior of TSRV. Oops. TRSV. Scrolling down. Varroa mites. And let's see. Researchers still uncertain about the virus, how the virus behaves. Not clear if the infection would persist without the bees picking up or the virus from plants they visit. 
So I will say the data on Varroa mites, mites And this paragraph seems to betray some researcher uncertainty. So, researcher uncertainty on virus. And then I could condense all of this into other possible causes of colony collapse. And as I scroll through, I realize I have accounted for all of the article. If you've completed this section correctly, you will have accounted for all of the article. And that means that every sentence, every paragraph, will be understood by you and categorized. And you'll see how a news reporter will develop a single story based on a variety of different types of evidence. Later in class, we'll talk about the strength of varying your evidence and the difference between strong evidence and weak evidence, and a strong argument or a strong explanation versus a weak one. Understanding different types of evidence and being able to catalog them in a short passage like this is essential to proceeding with that discussion. So, continue working on it with your critical reading worksheets and ask questions in class.